I thought it was you. Nice to see you, Dixon. It's been a while, Grandpa. One year, if my memory hasn't left me. Good to see you haven't kicked the bucket. <laughs> Put a sock in it. Wait. Dixon. Dunban. You're the heroes who risked your lives a year ago in the battle to defend the colonies. What's a pretty young lady like you doing hanging around with this bunch of slackers? Dunban, Dixon. Thanks for helping out back there. I don't believe we did anything. He's right. Save your thanks for that giant bird. What was that thing? A telethia. A mystical beast that protects the sleeping Bionis. Though I've never heard of one ever venturing down to where us Homs live. Strange. A telethia? So that's what it's called. A mystical beast that protects the Bionis. So, what's your plan from here? Follow that metal-faced machine, I presume. What else? He's gonna pay for what he did to Fiora. Well then, there's only one place he'd go. Galahad Fortress in Sword Valley. A year ago, those things were building a huge fortress, right in the valley. Tactically, it's an excellent location to launch attacks from. I feel there's a strong chance they've now finished building it. That would explain why both colonies were attacked recently. Sword Valley, the very place where we made our last stand one year ago. So it's settled. Bash down a fortress and smash some metal brains. Easy rain. Chalk? There's somewhere else I need to go first. But what could be more important than... Wait, you saw another one. Saw what? What are you on about? These visions sound pretty handy. Well, out with it. What do you see? I was somewhere very high up. I was fighting at the peak of a huge tower. Fighting Metal Face. I heard a voice. And then the Monado's power was unleashed. His armor instantly gave way. The Monado doesn't work on Metal Face at the moment. But if that vision comes true... A tower, huh? Doesn't give us much to go on. Can you remember anything else from your vision? I remember a huge horn. That's it. As I fought Metal Face, I could see the Bionis head. Prison Island. Prison Island? I've never been, but I've heard of a black tower at the head of the Bionis. They say it was built by the ancient High Entia race. The High Entia are real? I thought they were a myth. I wouldn't blame you, son. An ancient race living at the top of the Bionis? It does sound crazy. But Bionis is home to all kinds of different people, not just us. That includes the High Entia. The High Entia, huh? I dismiss them as folklore as well. Never assume anything. Seeing is believing, right? Have you ever met one? Well, yeah. Wow. Dixon, man, you're just full of surprises. What can I say? I'm well-traveled. <laughs> and it's all for your future. Day and night I've searched for new lands, met new cultures, and gained knowledge for our people. The life of a wandering old fool. A lonely one at that. <laughs> Stop your whining. You do it because you enjoy it. And you make a tidy profit. Who asked you, Dunban? Well then, Shulk, what's it to be? We'll head there. There are alternatives. We could abandon the colonies, find a place the Mekon will not discover and live in secret. I realized something when we were fighting Zord. Wherever we go, they'll follow. We can't run from these things. We must fight on. I see. Then I am obliged to join you. You want to come with us? Scared I'll get hurt? No way. We know you're stronger than anything. Right, Ryan? You bet! I've recovered a great deal since we last met. And that miserly old coot over there made me this. Sharp. Light. Perfect for cutting through steel. Show me a mech on and I'll slice it in two. I might not be in peak condition, but I'm useful. I can't thank you enough. We're in it together now. You can count on us, Dunban. Miserly old coot. 
That sword is forged from Mechon armor. It's worth every penny. So you keep saying. If you want to go to the Bionis head, you'll need a guide to get to the upper regions. We're at the bottom, so I guess the only way to go is up. Right, but we'll need to go up the lower back first. The lower back? Colony 6 is right at the top of the Bionis leg, so we'll have to head around the waist. Through a place called Sartal Marsh. Follow me. And as you can see, Dunban has actually joined our party here officially. It was only a matter of time. And Brian is now in the reserves. So let's take a closer look at Dunban because Dixon, as you can see, is not in our official party. He was just there for the one battle. I'm not sure why. They could have easily not had him there. Uh, but Othar Otharin, once again, I have trouble with his name. And Juju are also guests in our party, but we do have a new party member. And we do get an update here uh, to new battle tactics for Dunban. Dunban is kind of built like a tank. Like I said, a little bit like Rhine. His talent art is Blossom Dance. My talent art is Blossom Dance. Press B in time with each slash, and I can strike up to four times in succession. The talent gauge fills up when I auto-attack. My style is to avoid attacks, but I can do a large amount of damage. You won't see the young ones doing this. I'm more about taking the hits than dodging them. You might want to wear light equipment so you can stay quick on your feet. Ryan and I are both skilled at drawing aggro, but my technique is to perform attacks that cause heavy damage. Gems that increase your agility would be the perfect complement to your style, Dunban. And so they give us a little bit of details about it. Now, the first time that I read that, I figured Dunban was a DPS character. He is not. He is more geared toward being a tank character, just a tank character that literally dodges. He is in evasion type uh, tank character. So let's take a closer look at him now that he has officially joined the party. He is level 28. And as you can see, Ryan is now over in the reserves over on the side. We'll stick with this party. I like this party. A Dunban Charla Dun uh, Shulk party is quite nice. It's still technically a tank heal DPS build just with Dunban doing a little bit more damage than Ryan and not being able to take as many hits. As you can see, he doesn't have the HP that Ryan does. Not even close. What am I doing? We're going to take a closer look. So we do have the anti mechon Glaive. I don't believe we have anything to replace that with. No, we do not. And I don't think he has any upgrades available for him in, in our thing here. Not, not at all. Oh, we could get more like grand armor but like they said he needs agility so that he can dodge all the time we could go for the diver top but that's probably just too low uh nothing in arms probably no just kind of looking at the top row here that'll probably be the best bet for any kind of upgrades no that is indeed it so as you can see he is a general since he has all the general stuff even though i don't believe that's an official title for him let's take a look at his arts though this is where some of the good stuff happens. As you can see, he's already got 8,000 uh, AP. So he's been keeping up with us somehow. Uh, for what I like for him, I do like Blinding Blossom. Impressive exploits draw aggro from a party member to Dunban. So he can automatically pull aggro over to himself. Uh, Spirit Breath, I do not like. Uh, but I don't think there's necessarily... Oh, you know what? Serene Heart. Serene Heart is good instead of Spirit Breath. So let's take, uh, let's start from the top. Pretty much everything that we're going to do with Dunban starts with Gale Slash. Stab an enemy quickly and deeply inflicting bleed damage. It does quite a bit of damage considering, uh, but pretty much everything is built off of Gale Slash, as you'll see. Like Electric Gut Buster. Deal a devastating kick and flicks break if used after Gale Slash. So you go Gale Slash, Electric Gut Buster, and you are going to get a break. Uh, Peerless, I do like. It's an aura. An aura of high spirits, cures party of confuse, and increases strength. 
by 100% lasts for 8 seconds, uh, but it has a huge cooldown, unfortunately. Uh, Worldly Slash, also going to be something that I stick with. Uh, combo lowering physical defense after Gale Slash, it'll also lower strength. So once again, Gale Slash, Electric Gut Buster, Gale Slash, Worldly Slash. Uh, Battle Eye, uh, I'm not a big fan of. Fix your gaze firmly on a single enemy, creating an aura of focus, uh, so you have a chance of doing a double attack, which is pretty much two auto attacks. Uh, I don't necessarily like that on Dunban. There is a character where double attack is insanely good, but that is not Dunban. It's good for him, don't get me wrong, but it's not fantastic like the other character. Uh, Steel Strike I am also a fan of. Pulverize the enemy with a precise attack inflicting topple. It only lasts for three seconds, unfortunately. Uh, Serene Heart, like I said, that is something that I am a fan of. A peaceful and focused aura that increases accuracy and evasion. He definitely needs the Serene Heart pretty much as often as he can. Uh, his accuracy and evasion uh, go up by 50%, but if his health is low, then it increases by 75%. And it lasts 15 seconds. It lasts a while. But his invasion uh, being increased by 50% or 75% is definitely good for Dunban's build. Like I said, he's a tank character that dodges all the time, literally evades, and that is nice. Spirit Breath, not that great. Uh, or that removes debuffs and grants haste. Haste is not necessarily something that I care about that much on Dunban, uh, but then the Blinding Bo Blossom to uh, draw aggro. Uh, so let's go ahead and start working on uh, some of the AP just real quickly here. Let's level things up very, very nicely. As you can see, the bleed damage is being increased as well, as well as the cooldown being lowered, plus the effect time is only 10 seconds. So maxing that out is definitely something that I want to do right away. Then we'll do Electric Gut Buster, increase the damage, decrease the cooldown, increase the effect time of that break. Definitely something that I want to do. And it's almost even now. Almost even. So the cooldown and the uh, effect time are almost the same. Uh, Peerless, yeah, it's something that I do want. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily worth like maxing out right now. Uh, let's go for Worldly Slash instead. It lowers the strength. Um, we won't have him as my main character too much, uh, simply because I feel like the AI controls him better than I do for that simple reason. Uh, let's level up Serene Heart. That is something that I definitely want. Uh, less cooldown, more effect time. If I can, I want him with that constantly. So let's, let's get that up. And uh, after that, I think... Uh, Blinding Blossom is probably a good idea. As you can see, it lowers the cooldown and it increases how much we're pulling every time. So now we're up to 32 and 27 cooldown. And then one more in Steel Strike and we'll call it a day. That's a very powerful move, don't get me wrong, but he's more built around tanking than anything else. So that is done bad. He's already level 28, so he's doing better than us. Uh, for his skills... He comes with almost nothing. Uh, he comes with medium equipment. That's not something that I care about too much. He comes with prudence, sustained, or yeah, sustained spirit on prudence line. Extends the duration of auras. We're gonna want that. We're definitely gonna want that. He also has wisdom here that'll lead us to spiritual awakening greatly increases aggro when no armor is equipped this is not something that i typically do uh, but if you have dunban with no armor that increases his agility which helps him dodge i would rather give him you know agility plus gems than you know risk getting hit and dying because you have no armor on i've never really gone that way but apparently it's a wise way to go since it's wisdom uh but we'll stick with prudence for the time being he does have some skill links as you can see he only has uh the basic he only has the yellow affinity between all party members which means he likes charlotte just as much as he's like as he likes shulk even though he knows shulk and has known him for a while uh, Ryan, I understand. He doesn't seem to be the biggest fan of Ryan, but uh, apparently he's he's got the hots for Charlotte. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Medium equipment, boost physical defense, 
Increases damage dealt by ether. Yeah, no, we're gonna go with physical defense. That's a great start. He has the same amount of affinity coins as everybody else, just for the record. And we will go with uh, that because we don't have anything else. Battle cry and I guess medium equipment from Ryan. Uh, what's the other thing that I can get from him? Heavy equip. No, no. All right, now everybody else does have Dunban added to them. And this is where the skill links uh, and the affinity coins start to become more and more important as you go forward. Well, he can get that, yeah, but he can't afford it. He can't even afford the medium equip. Uh, but we're going to need a lot of affinity coins because, as you can see, this is going to take us a, a lot of affinity coins to actually max those out. So that is Dunban. And I did want to check just to make sure i believe i got all of the locations in the ether mine and you can tell because the map will be complete it is complete notice uh down here at the glow moss lake that was not filled in before so we did get all of the locations notice that there's a few places that we can't warp to uh they are red those are the parts that are pretty much locked out for us now all of this. This is uh, the path to the ether deposit that we missed as well right there. I believe we got all of that. Uh, I believe I missed this part of Central Pit Level 3. This would have been uh, taking the, uh, the kind of piston thing here, the regulation piston, uh, if we took it down. Uh, on that first part and we headed back here, it would have led to another ether deposit. But uh, that is the map fully done for the ether mine and that is our fully completed first fully completed map and it's not the first that we could have completed but uh that is something that we have now completed uh let's head back here because it is worth pointing out uh exactly where we are so let's head back we'll pick up a couple things along the way and we'll pick up a dober corgi very nice thing like i said and the spirit Clamaya. Still not entirely sure what that is. But I think it's a flower. Alright, this heart to heart we don't have access to. But we do have a new party member. And here we can find a location. The freight elevator. This is not uh, available to us anymore. We can't take it down. It got blown up. And therefore we don't have access to it. But we did learn a little bit more about what's going on. But... It's hard for me to talk about it without necessarily spoiling all that much, but uh, Zord gave us a little bit of information. Did that just spawn right there? I'll take it. Zord gave us some information. We won't find out really more about that until much later. Uh, we saw a lot of visions in uh, with, with Shulk that really isn't going to be that impactful for us for quite some time. We didn't see anything from Satoral Marsh. I, I'll try to, or Satoral Marsh, however Dixon said it. I'll say Satoral a lot, I'm sure. And I'm sure that's not how I'm supposed to say it. Uh, here we can find the Hawkses again, because we are back in Colony 6. That is where we are. Remember, we went through the ether mine so that we could go to the other side of Colony 6. And here is the other side of Colony 6. So let's explore around here a bit. Uh, we have a location, the Pod Depot. This is going to be important for several things later. Uh, we have a few of these, um, let's call them escape pods, because <laughs> it is the Pod Depot after all. Uh, this is how uh, the refugees got to Bionis' leg, through these things here. Oh, Ryan and Dunban, they do have a heart to heart here, but they are. They are not familiar with each other enough for that to happen. I find that Ryan and Dunban are a difficult pair for me to get affinity with, and I'll probably be using a lot of gifts to deal with that as we go forward, because it's difficult for me to run um, a build with two tanks, even though Dunban does do a lot of damage. So here is the gate. Colony 6 gate. It is closed tightly. Daza is on the other side of that. We saw Daza a little bit. Uh, ooh, a Grom Nebula. Haven't we seen a Grom before? Probably have. 
and a Flamantol. This is a new enemy, definitely. So let's go in and, and go for a Gale Slash into a Worldly Slash, because that does more damage. And then try to go into a Steel Strike. Get to see Dundan work a little bit. Because we don't, we don't get to see too much of him. Oh, are we still under attack? From the Grob Nebula, that's probably not good. All right, let's try to try to do something. Just try to topple him there. Worldly slash. Let's get uh, let's get Peerless going. We should go for more auras. You can only have one active at a time, so don't spam them in a row. That is not that is not smart. Let's go for Blossom Dance. Or we could kill it. Thanks, Shulk. We mustn't be careless. You mustn't be careless. Remember that. Element fragment for that. I don't think that's something that I necessarily care about. There's a lot of elements that I do care about, but I believe that is the one that I do not care about. I don't just want a plain fragment. I want something a little bit better than that. All right, so that is where we are. We just got to the other side of the gate. That's really it. That's what we came all this way to do. Lubba Mantle. This guy is me. And he would aggro on me anyway. Apparently I missed. Get more Peerless going. Like I said, most of the time I'm not a fan of using Dunban myself because I do believe that the AI uses him better than I do. As you can see, Gale Slash is very, very good. Uh, let's go for Serene Heart to increase my accuracy and evasion. And we'll, we'll just keep him uh, on me. On Dunban. Which is weird. I don't usually play as Dunban. I will say this, though. For those of you that have played the other Xeno games, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have not played it, don't worry too much. But Dunban does not have a last name. Most characters in this game do not have last names. Uh, who are the ones that we have seen so far with last names? It's Emmy Leader and Kenny Rohan. Those are the two that we have seen with names so far. Dunban does not have a name, and his sister Fiora did not have a last name. Uh, but if I were to give him one, it would be Uzuki. Clearly, this guy is Uzuki. This is Dunban Uzuki. I guess that makes it Fiora Uzuki as well, but this guy definitely an Uzuki. So let's head where we're actually supposed to go this time. Now that we have our bearing straight once more, let's continue on. Don't don't fall off the side. You, you can fall off the side. That's not what we want to do. We're on, like, Bionis' hip right now. We're heading towards the back, and we have made it to the Misty Path. And we will continue forward from the Misty Path next time. That is going to do it for these parts of Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles. I've been Baller Scoop. I've been joined, as always, by my hip squad of Sharla, Dunban, Shulk, and Ryan. When we come back, we will continue forward. We will head to the marsh, which is around the backside of uh, Bionis. Hope you guys have enjoyed these parts. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>